Did you know Google Cloud has an easy way to run containers that doesn't require any setup or knowledge of Kubernetes? What is it and how can you use it for your machine learning workflows? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome to AI Adventures, where we explore the art, science, and tools of machine learning. My name is Yufang Guo, and on this episode, we're going to dive into Cloud Run with help from special guest Brett McGowan from the Serverless Toolbox series. Thanks so much for joining me today, Brett. It is great to be here, Yufang. So to start us off at a high level, what is Cloud Run? Cloud Run is serverless, which means it makes it easy to take your app and run it for real, meaning it's highly available and highly scalable, but without you having to manage the underlying infrastructure like creating virtual machines or handling networking and load balancing. And Cloud Run uses containers, which means you can use any programming language or any custom libraries. It's a great tool if you're building an HTTP web app or a REST API, and you can use Cloud Run to create event-driven architectures, which means your code can automatically execute when an event happens in the cloud. For example, anytime a file is uploaded to Google Cloud Storage. OK, so there's a lot of words in there. But it seems like, at the end of the day, Cloud Run's main job is to run containers. And there's lots of other words in there about how it's running those containers. So let's start unpacking those terms one by one. But first, I want to review what exactly is a container. Definitely. A container is a standardized way to package up not just your app's code, but also its associated dependencies and runtimes so that it executes the same in all kinds of different environments. You can think of them as like a virtual machine, but lighter weight. They can start up in less than a few seconds, which means you can quickly create additional copies of your app to scale up and handle an increase in incoming traffic. It's becoming quite an industry standard in software development over the recent years, and makes it easy to describe your app's runtime environment using human-readable text, which means it can go into version control systems, and everyone loves version control systems. Yeah, sure, Brett. It's my favorite thing. We can chat more about version controls later. But first, I want to make sure viewers know we have an episode of the Serverless Toolbox Show where we dive more deeply into the particulars of containers why you should care, and how to try them out. That's right. That was a really great discussion. All right, let's take a look at what Cloud Run looks like. If you've used containers before, you should recognize the workflow. You'll build your app how you normally would, but add an additional file called a Docker file, which has commands to install your runtime environment, load any system dependencies, and start your app. So that's going to include your Python version, TensorFlow library, other requirements like NumPy and SciPy, as well as all of your source code. And I guess we'll also want to make sure our data is accessible somewhere, whether that's in a cloud storage bucket or maybe in a database view. That's right. And then when your Docker file is ready, there are three steps to get it running on Cloud Run. First, you'll build your container image, which executes the commands in your Docker file and creates a resulting image. You can build it on your workstation using a tool like Docker, or you can do the build step in the cloud using Google Cloud Build. Second, you'll publish your container image to a container registry. Once your container image is in the registry, the third step is easy. To deploy to Cloud Run using the command gcloud run deploy and pass in your published image path. Cool. So this feels pretty similar to other serverless approaches, where you take your code, push it to some kind of platform, and then the platform handles everything from scaling and updates to security and networking. So what are some of the limitations or other things folks should keep in mind when building for a serverless platform? One thing to be aware of is that your containers should be stateless, which means uh, they save files or cache values outside of the running app itself. For example, instead of writing files to disk, save them to Google Cloud Storage and save permanent values to the Firestore database or to a SQL database. Ah, oh, I see. And are there any notable limitations here? Uh, for instance, what if I wanted to run machine learning training jobs or image manipulation service, uh, perhaps at a large scale? Would Cloud Run still be the right tool for the job? Well, maybe, maybe not. Cloud Run fully managed does not currently support GPUs. So if you need GPUs, you'll have to do some extra work. Ah, that's quite notable then. And what would I have to do to get me some GPUs? 
Well, Cloud Run has two platforms. The fully managed platform that we've been talking about that handles basically all the infrastructure for you. And another platform called Cloud Run for Anthos that runs on Google Kubernetes Engine, or GKE. Since we can attach GPUs to the Kubernetes clusters and tweak a whole bunch of other hardware settings, this likely would solve the problem. I see. So how does Cloud Run on GKE then differ from the fully managed version? Also, it might be good to go over just a bit about what Kubernetes is. Right. Let's back it up a bit. Kubernetes does things like making sure your containers are alive, it restarts containers and nodes as needed, and makes things highly available. It also allows your services to talk to each other, which is important for distributed training. And it also handles load balancing of requests. It allows you to run your containers reliably at scale. But at the end of the day, Kubernetes is really a tool for DevOps teams, not developers. Ah, gotcha. So if I'm a machine learning engineer, I shouldn't really be writing Kubernetes configuration files. Right. That is a separate full-time job. But Cloud Run abstracts much of that away, making it much easier to interact with a Kubernetes cluster. But there's still maybe one slight problem with your plan. Cloud Run is really more designed for short-lived responses to web requests. So there's a 15-minute limit on request timeout. What? That won't do. How can we get around that? All right, well, since Cloud Run is really just a layer on top of Knative, we could directly use that open source platform, Knative, to get a longer request timeout. Wait, 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 hold on. We got to back up. Did you say Knative? What is that? Well, Knative is a platform layer that runs in your Kubernetes cluster that's more friendly for developers to use. Knative provides a bunch of reasonable defaults and makes deploying to a Kubernetes cluster easier. And one of the things you can configure is the limit of the request timeout, aka the maximum amount of time that your app can run for. Aha. So 15 minutes isn't a whole lot. Uh, how much better can we do then? Well, according to the documentation, you can supply any integer. Wow. So if I use int max, oh, is that in seconds or minutes? It uh, looks like it's in seconds. OK. So let's see some back of the envelope math here. Uh, 2.1 billion divided by 60, another 60, 24, 365, and uh, another 0.25 for the leap year. It gives, uh, what is that? A little over 68 years. Yep, that ought to do it. Oh, actually, it looks like the docs say it's a 64-bit integer. Wow, really? OK, uh, well, I guess that's going to be like 300 billion year request timeout. Yeah, I don't think we're going to have a bottleneck there. Awesome. So I trade a bit more system complexity management to gain functionality by moving over to Knative. Uh, what does Knative get me uh, aside from just longer request timeouts? Knative provides a more developer-friendly interface to Kubernetes and has two main components, serving and eventing. Serving is actually running your app. For example, when a request comes in, this takes care of figuring out which app maps to that request, which version of that app is needed, and which configuration to supply. Configuration are things like environment variables, database connection strings, etc. It's the sort of information that might be different in development and production environments. And obviously, you wouldn't want to code those values, hard code them in the source code. Knative actually packages up app code and configuration values into one unit called a revision. This allows you to deploy and roll back apps with the configuration. The other thing that Knita gives you on top of Kubernetes is eventing. Basically, defining a universal way to have your code run in response to an event trigger, like a file getting uploaded, or a commit push to GitHub, or a message coming in on a Kafka screen. Wow. So Knita sure ends up doing quite a bit of heavy lifting. So if I'm understanding this correctly, using Cloud Run fully managed is super easy from a development standpoint, but there are limitations like the 15-minute response time limit, and you can't use GPUs. You can switch over to using Cloud Run on GKE, pick up GPUs, but the 15-minute response time limit, that's still in place because we're still on Cloud Run. But if we go one level down and dig deeper and use Knative directly, we'll have access to more configuration options, allowing us to set a much higher limit. And it sounds like we're specifically choosing not to drill down any further below Knative to using Kubernetes directly, because that would perhaps add too much complexity and not be worth that trade-off. That was a great summary. That sounds about right. Cool. Well, thanks so much, Brett, for coming on the show today to help explain all these layers of Cloud Run. I feel way more prepared to make the right choice about infrastructure tooling now. You got it.
Thanks so much for watching this episode of Cloud AI Adventures. And if you enjoyed it, click that like button and be sure to subscribe to get all the latest episodes right when they come out. For now, check out Cloud Run, Knative, and GKE and get your app containerized today.